بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله so alhamdulillah tonight is our which night is it third fourth people are half asleep too much too much for iftar third night or fourth night fourth night okay so tonight's our fourth reminder what were the first three reminders what was the theme of the first reminder what did we talk about so if, if we can't remember the first three, imagine when I ask you after 15 nights, what were the first 15 reminders on? Three reminders. The first one was on? Ibadah. Yes, worship. We talked about what worship was and we talked about Allah being the Rabb. The second reminder was on? Dhikr, God, at least somebody was paying attention. No? It was on dhikr and the importance of dhikr and the benefits of dhikr. Yesterday's reminder. Yes, salam. What did we talk about yesterday? <laughs> Allah Akbar. See, Sheikh's paying attention. Yeah, Sheikh's the only one. <laughs> yeah, enter into Islam completely. Yes, and we talked about no half heartedness in the deen. That this is a deen in which you don't pick and choose. Today, inshallah, we're going to reflect on ayah number 92 from Surah Ali Imran. And Shaykh Abdul Rahman, this is going to be the last ayah he recites in the Taraweeh today. And what's this ayah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, That you won't attain bir until you spend from that which you love. You won't attain bir until you spend from that which you love. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ And whatever you spend, then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of it. So this verse, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting what? The importance of spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, now what is bir? Yeah, the Mufassireen, the scholars, as we talked about yesterday, the scholars, the Mufassireen are those who explain the Qur'an. They said that the meaning of bir here is Jannah. Meaning you will not attain Jannah until you spend from that which you love. Yes, until you spend from that which you love. And Ramadan, of course, is a month of spending. The Prophet ﷺ was described as the, the most generous of people. And he was even more generous in the month of Ramadan. So this is a sunnah that we revive in Ramadan. And you have ample opportunity when the different charities come and present the appeals that they're doing. This is a chance for us to, of course, gain the pleasure of Allah by giving from that which we love. But of course, there's an important principle in this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, he says that you will not attain Jannah until you spend from that which you love. And I want to focus on that part, that which you love. Okay, because when it comes to charity, what do we often do? Yes, when it comes to charity, you know, when you want to get rid of some old clothes, you throw it in charity. Yes, nobody buys a new coat, enjoys that new coat and then says, you know what, I'm going to give this in charity. But that's the charity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about here. Giving from that which you love. And when you look at the tafsir of this ayah, there's a, a famous story that's always narrated. It's the story of Abu Talha. Abu Talha was one of the wealthy individuals of Medina. And he used to have a garden which was outside the masjid. Okay, the masjid of course wasn't what it is now, the whole gated area. It was much smaller than that. And outside of the masjid, Abu Talha had a beautiful garden. And the Prophet ﷺ would go and enjoy that garden. He would sit there, he would drink from its water, etc. When Abu Talha heard this verse, that you will not attain Jannah, piety or Jannah until you spend from that which you love. Abu Talha came to the Prophet ﷺ. And he said to the Prophet Bayruha that the most beloved of my wealth that I possess is Bayruha. It's the name of that garden. Wa innaha sadaqa lillah. And indeed I give it a sadaqa for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Talha, as soon as he heard the verse that you will not attain Jannah until you spend from that which you love, he immediately went to the Prophet and offered the most beloved thing to him in charity. And the Prophet said, keep it for your relatives. 
Why are they more in need? Yani give it to them, you'll get the reward of sadaqa and you'll get the reward of looking after your relatives. But the point is what? Is that he came straight away to give from that which he loved. And many examples are recorded in the books of Tasir. Yani Zayd ibn Haritha, he had a horse that he used to love. Again, when he heard this verse, he came to the Prophet والسلام, said that this is the most beloved thing I possess. I give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point is what, my dear brothers and sisters? That when we give, we give from that which we love. And, you know, as I said, it's different from the attitude that many of us have today. And we should try to practice this principle. Yes, have something that you, yani when you think about what is it that you truly enjoy, that you truly love, that's close to you, from your possessions. Try and give that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I remember a few years ago, I shared the story of Abu Talha in one of our fundraisers. And the next day, two sisters came. And they came with gold. And the sister said that, you know, that story, it touched us. And we want to attain the reward that you talked about in the ayah. And they came and they gave their gold and they said, sell the gold and whatever you get for it, give it towards the new build. And Allahu Akbar, I mean, this is Iman. And we all know sisters, they love gold. Yes, and nobody wants to give away their gold. But the sisters were ready. And because subhanAllah, they realized that actually, what's the reward? What's the prize? The prize is Jannah. And I was joking, I was saying, SubhanAllah, you know, the brothers need to step up as well. Yeah, so, mashallah, we're car parks full of Porsches and Range Rovers. And on the way out, we need some keys. Yes? But giving that from that which you love, this is, this is what we need to revive, my dear brothers and sisters. And I'll finish on two points. Number one is, of course, when we give in charity, we should understand that whatever we give, um, giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not reduce your wealth. You're not going to become poor by giving. It's never happened. All of you will know whenever you've given in the past, Allah has given you more. Allah has replaced that wealth. And it's a guarantee from the Prophet ﷺ that your wealth will not decrease by giving in charity. The second thing I want to remind myself and yourself about is that when we give to those in need, never think you're doing them a favor. Don't think that you know I'm helping them or I'm doing them a favor. The reality is, as Ibn Qayyim mentioned, that we should be grateful to Allah, that Allah is using us as a means to provide for that person in need. That person in need will get what's coming to them. The, 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 the fortunate ones are you and I. If Allah gives us the opportunity to give to them, that's because Allah is using you for khair. So never think, never get tired, oh there's a charity coming, there's a charity coming, they're always asking. Look at it as an opportunity. An opportunity for you to give and gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, ending on this, one of the ways to show gratitude, as we mentioned many times before, um, the gratitude, there's three components to gratitude. Firstly, recognizing the blessing. Secondly, making mention of the blessing. And thirdly, using the blessing in a way which is pleasing to Allah. Is there any better use of our wealth than giving it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So in this month, let's revive that uh, habit of giving. Yani giving every day. There's one hadith, and uh, I keep saying I'll end on this. I will end on this one. The hadith where the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he mentioned um, that uh, every day, um, two angels come down to people and the one, one angel says, Oh Allah, giving compensation to the one who gave. You think about this, on a daily basis, these two angels are coming and they say, one makes a dua, Oh Allah, giving compensation to the one who spends in charity. And the other one says, Oh Allah, destroy the one who withholds. Destroy the one who withholds. The, ch the wealth that you have, use it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give and you will get the dua of the angels. Withhold and you will get the curse of the angels. And there are many platforms now where you can give on a daily basis, whether it's launch good or, or Ramadan giving, etc. Set something up where you're giving, even if it's a little bit. But every day you're giving some sadaqah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah, He makes us from those who give for His sake.